Hello everyone. Today I want to tell you about our pre-trip routine. Stay tuned. One of the first things that we do is we plug our camper in. We have a 30 amp outlet here that we have for the specifically for the camper so that we can run the air conditioning check all that kind of stuff so this will help if you don't have a 30 amp you can actually plug it up to a, a regular household 20 amp socket and you can check some things but you can't run both air conditioners you may be able to just run one but the only thing that we do is make sure we got power and uh, things like turn the refrigerator on. So that's the first thing that I do. Now the next thing that I do is I make sure that we can open and close all the slides. Okay, so now that I know that the slides are operable and I have power to the camper. The next thing that I normally do is I give the camper a good inspection outside. So that's everything from seals to uh, making sure that uh, things are in place, you know, something's not falling off like a, a clearance light or something like that. Uh, I check the hitch the fifth wheel part of the hitch and make sure that it's excuse me with the camera here and I check for I check for seams make sure nothing's cracked uh, just general a general inspection a lot of times I'll notice wear and tear on parts of the camper um, the seals in the slides they, they tend to wear and you can sometimes catch a little tear or something somewhere just to make sure that it's not falling off. So, and you know, I also check the windows. Uh, speaking of windows, look at that. We got our logo on the camper now. So if you see this going down the road, it's us. The big old green logo behind the camper it's us send us a little shout one of the things that you may not think about is your landing gear so you always want to check to make sure that your landing gear is operable because you don't want to get somewhere and you may have an issue with your landing gear whether it be a fuse or something like that but just to give it some exercise check it out Now, I know you already have questions. I know you already have, you know, Dwayne, I don't have power at home. My camper is stored somewhere else. So, if you don't have power at home, then that's just as simple as working out even the 20 amp uh, situation. And you can you can probably put what they call dog, dog bones. Hold on. Okay. You don't have a 30 amp service at your house. I understand that. This is what is called a dog bone. On one end, this will fit into a regular socket. This will fit 30 amp service if you have 30 amp. I have 50 amp, so I have another one that reduces this from the, the 50 to a 30. But you can plug this into a wall socket at your house, run it to your camper. Then you can at least charge the battery. You can do open the slides, turn the lights on, it's, it's good to know that because if you want to hang out in your camper or something like that, depending on the time of the year, you can actually do it with this. So now let's answer the other question. You don't have your camper stored at your house. Your camper is stored uh, at a different location. Let's say it's at a storage lot. If you have a generator or you have somebody that has a generator, this generous, get it generator generous to you, and they will allow you to take that generator and you can do some of the same things. You can at least check it out, open it up, 
make sure that everything is working, uh, uh, you know, maybe, maybe even run through some of the functions of the camper. But try to get uh, a system down because I have actually found things during this time. Okay, another question. How long before do you, before the trip, do you start this pre-inspection, if you want to call it? Our routine is about a week out. It's different with everybody, I know. The reason I do it a week out is because I don't have to do everything in one day. I can, first day, I can plug it in, open the camper, uh, you know, that may be it. Uh, next day, I'll get out and I'll walk around a little bit. I spend a little time each day and then if I if I do run into an issue I have a couple of days that I can either fix it or try to get something done about it so that's why I do it about a week out so if like this trip uh, we're going Thursday uh, I open the camper up Friday you know so that's one of the things that's or that's some of the things that we do that really has helped us have uh, peace of mind when we pull out of the yard. Okay, one extremely important thing is these bad boys right here, the tires. Find time to inspect your tires on the outside and the inside. Uh, it could take a few minutes. It depends on you. It depends on how thorough you want to be. Check your tread. These bugs are getting bad. Uh, I actually checked uh, this trip I put a little grease in the bearings and I just do that uh, I don't know maybe every two or three months but if you do that make sure your 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 tires are off the ground and you're rotating it while you are putting a little bit of grease in there check to make sure that they're snug you want to check your lugs from time to time to make sure they're they're at the proper proper uh, uh, torque and uh, you know that's something and while you're under here you can go ahead and inspect underneath the camper which a lot of times does not get looked at that often uh, you might find you got a wear spot or uh, check the mechanics the spare tire always check the spare tire check the air in the spare tire before you leave the house uh, a friend of mine just got back from a trip they had they went to the North Carolina mountains, coming down one of the mountains, I think it was on Black Mountain side, they had a blowout. But he had a spare, he was good to go, he got it changed, everything was good to go. So make sure that you got a spare and that you got uh, good pressure in it. Take it from us, we have I think two videos where we had two flat tires, uh, not at the same time, but that has happened to us. Now this is a little tip. I uh, have these mats. They, I think they're foam mats. Um, I actually got them. Somebody was getting, giving them away. But I use them to get on the ground. They're extremely light. And they're, they keep you from being right on the ground. And they have really come in handy. I keep two of these with me in the camper. So that uh, if anything ever happens that I have to get on the ground, these are what I get. Now one of the other areas that I also check is storage. Uh, storage is so important because uh, you don't want to leave something home that you need to take or leave something home that you meant to take with you. So I try to go through just about every trip, what I have underneath, what I need, and what I don't need. Uh, sometimes it's what I want to take. So I would suggest at least looking in your storage and mine is I, I won't say it's a mess but I can get to everything it's not extremely organized like a lot uh, some of them that I've seen but I know where everything is and that's another reason why I go through my storage to make sure that I have what I need uh, sometimes I take two grills I have a smoker and I have a Q grill uh, Every now and then, I'll, I have a little charcoal grill, so I'll switch one out. And depending on how, how long we're going to be gone, if I need more space, I know the grills are something that I can either leave one behind uh, 
or take. So it, it just it's just up to you what you want to put in your camper and what you want to make sure that you have for that trip. Uh, if you're going on a real long trip, you may want to save some of this space for extra clothes, extra supplies, things like that. And it depends on whether you have a fifth wheel or a travel trailer, how much stuff you can take. But I actually go through, I say I want to take this, I don't want to take that. Sometimes we don't take much at all. Uh, it depends on what we're going to do. So check your storage, even if you just look. And because you may, I'm telling you, you may see something that you catch before you get on the trip. Let me interrupt you for a minute. Hey, if you find value in this video, give us a like, a thumbs up, subscribe, and share. We'd love to have you as part of our family. Now back to the video. The biggest thing I check with my gas, my onboard gas, I make sure that they are secure. I make sure that they, 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 they th these latches have not come loose and that everything looks okay. I check the connections, I check to make sure that there's no breaks in there. And every now and then I'll turn it on, make sure I don't smell anything, and then just turn it back off. Okay, key tip, I do not travel with these on because if something breaks between here and the supply where it's going in the camper, then there's a great possibility of starting a fire. There's something that I do from time to time. One, because it keeps me, um, it keeps me in the flow of how to do things. Every now and then, I will hook up water here at the house and I'll run water into the tank and then I'll make sure that the water pump is working. So every now and then I'll go and I'll check out the water pump, make sure it's clear and clean, uh, make, this, make sure there's no debris in it. I've already done that and I've already put water in the tank. So this trip, we're gonna take a little water with us uh, and we may stay at a Harvest Host. Big announcement, we just joined Harvest Host. We're gonna try that and see how it works. Uh, there's an affiliate link in our bio. Oh, the other thing, we just became Amazon affiliates. So a lot of the things that we talk about will be listed in our in our description and in our bio as far as links as you well know with everybody else uh, on YouTube once you become an affiliate or once you ask to become an affiliate with with Amazon is at no cost to you the purchaser I am actually uh, helping them sell a particular product that's that's the truth about it uh, whether if you like it it helps us this, this, uh, our travels are funded only by us and nobody else. So uh, that is part of, I guess, doing business. But that's exciting to us because if you purchase something from our site or our YouTube page, our affiliate link on Amazon, we get a teensy weensy part of that. But that teensy weensy part helps. I'm telling you it does. But this trip, we may do a harvest host. So stay tuned for that. I don't know if we're gonna do it, not promising it, uh, but it's really gonna depend. But that's one of the things I do. I check the water supply, turn it on, make sure that the, the, the fresh water tank does not leak. I got water sitting in it right now, it has not leaked. I run the pump, make sure all the faucets work, and we are good. Speaking of our affiliation with Amazon, this is a product that we buy and I'm going to do an unboxing. Yes, I tend to not like unboxings, especially if I've seen one. But since we just got this, I have to do it. This is a product that we use. And this is formulated for happy campers odor free. One scoop treats 40 gallons. Put it in your holding tank. It's a holding tank treatment. It's a powder substance, it's easy to put in. You just scoop it in there and it helps with all of the, um, the different types of odors, especially. Uh, it's environmentally friendly, good for a septic tank. Uh, and most household tissue um, cleans 
inhibits sludge or uh, crystal buildup. So we use this, uh, I don't know how long uh, we've been using it, but we've been using it for a while. This company is out of Medford, Oregon. And it says right there, try it risk-free. It does what we claim or your money back. Now, I can tell you right now, I bought this with my own dime. We are not being sponsored by this company, but this is uh, in our description. And I'll try to put a link in the description or in our bio about this because we use this. Now, back to the video. Okay, so now I'm ready to go inside and check out the inside. So come on in. Let's check it out. Okay, as you can see, I'm inside. And one of the things that I do is I turn on all the appliances. Now, there again, if you don't have the proper wattage or amps to do all that, you can't do it. You may have to do one thing at a time. So if you're at a 20 amp and uh, you can only run the air conditioner, run it, make sure it works, turn it off, then you may be able to turn on the lights or the refrigerator. Uh, that's what we do. We, we come in, we set up. This thing runs about a day, just like we would be camping, depending on where we're going, how much, uh, how much we, we want to experiment with this or that. I, uh, we may take the generator this time because we're talking about staying at a uh, harvest host, which is remote camping. And with that, you what you have to do is either have a generator, you have to be self-contained. Some of the harvest hosts have electricity for a small price. Uh, some of them have electricity and water. Um, one of the ones that we're looking at going to, which is not too far from our house, does not have any of that, which gives us a good chance to try with the generator. So this week, no, last week, what I did, uh, <laughs> I got the generator out and was getting ready to check that thing out and it didn't work. It didn't work. Well, I have a dual fuel generator. So I said, well, maybe it's bad gas. So I hooked the propane to it, pulled the choke, pulled it, pulled it, pulled it, boom, it worked. So I'm going, okay, it's not the generator. The generator is running. I didn't know what to do because now I'm stuck with one type of fuel instead of two. Long story short, I was able to figure it out. I got a video that I'm probably going to do that I'm a link to in here somewhere. But uh, it, it was it was crazy. Uh, spent most of the afternoon. But see, those are some of the things that I'm talking about. If I'd have just took the generator, put it in the truck, and we went, then right at the very beginning of our trip, we would have had an issue. So. That's why I say at least check it. That's why I give my, myself seven days so I can take my time and check certain things. We turn our, our refrigerator on uh, several days before, like it's on now, and it's running, it's cool. Already got frost in here. And so, in the next day or so, we'll start putting little things in here that we know we're going to take so that it's not this rush, 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 rush. Uh, and, and I know everybody's situation is different, so you have to work it to your advantage. But if you're planning to go on a trip, taking that time to walk through some things will make each trip that much better, especially when you leave the house, you know you've checked this, you know you've checked your tires, you know that you, you've got a refrigerator. I, I think they say, it depends on the refrigerator, I think they say this will stay cold, uh, uh, the proper cold temperature for six hours, I think. I'm not sure. Don't hold me to that. We've never had an issue with it. Stuff that's been in here frozen when we turn the refrigerator off, refrigerator off when we leave home, uh, it's frozen. Everything is frozen when we get there. Okay, one of the things that I never let go of uh, checking, I always check this hitch. 
Not that it's a bad hitch. It's just the fact that this is what keeps the camera attached to the truck. I want to make sure that this thing is torqued right, that there's nothing loose, there's no cracks, uh, that the the mechanism works. Uh, you know, I, I, I check this religiously. Will that keep something from happening? Well, if there's a failure, there's a failure, but it won't be like I just rushed into it, hooked up, and did not check to make sure this thing is sitting in here like it's supposed to. You know, with a, with a, uh, a bumper hitch, same thing. The good thing about a bumper hitch is either you're putting it on every time or every time that you hook up, you can see it, you can check it to make sure that it is good. Now, the other thing that I do is I check tire pressure in the truck. I make sure that it's got oil, you know, that kind of stuff. Just your general maintenance stuff. Uh, thinking about doing a video about the truck? Let me know, hit me up in the comments if you'd like to see a little video about my truck in particular. Uh, not too, I wouldn't say it's a lot that's different about it compared to other 350s, but just in case you wanna see this one. Well guys, I know I've forgotten something. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I will try to respond to them uh, when I get that comment or question. I hope this helps. I hope that you're doing well and look, just get out there and enjoy life. Take care, God bless. Hey!